small, cute, and agile. Those are the attributes that help the Autobianchi A112 lay the groundwork for a new model segment. When the A112 was introduced in the fall of 1969, car lovers got more than just an Italian version of Britain's Mini. Our test driver says it's fun driving through the mountains of South Tyrol in an Autobianchi A112. What could be better? You could zip along all the way to Rimini and treat yourself to a gelato. But you must really put the pedal to the metal to reveal the car's Italian temperament. The A112 was the first truly drivable super mini. It was produced by Fiat subsidiary Autobianchi, which functioned as a test lab for new car concepts in the 1960s. Fiat's first front-wheel drive vehicle, the Primula, was also created by Autobianchi in 1964. This A112 is a 44-horsepower transversely mounted four-cylinder engine with a capacity of 903 cubic centimeters. Our driver says the car's biggest weakness is the transmission. Many people say it's a bit clunky, but our tester doesn't notice that. He says the ride is comfortable and the car takes curves well. To him, the suspension's not as stiff as the Mini Coopers or other cars of its kind. But then the Mini was a real race car. In the 1960s, the little British pocket rocket won the Monte Carlo Rally three times in a row. Still, the first Minis to roll off the production lines in 1959 were designed to be practical, everyday vehicles. The car's designer, Sir Alec Izagonis, wanted to pack four people and their belongings into a car just three meters long. In 1969, a decade after the Mini, the Autobianchi began taking part in rallies. In the 1980s, the company started to market the A112 as a Lancia. Christoph says people who can build a city like this must also be able to build good cars. The Autobianchi is at home in little Italian alleyways like this. Italy has a long tradition of producing small cars. The Fiat Nova Cinquecento brought mobility to an entire nation and reduced car driving to its very essentials. The little car rolled off the assembly lines for almost two decades, from 1957 to 1976. The A112, like the Fiat 500, was the baby of designer Dante Giacosa. Christoph says if anyone can build small cars, it's the Italians. The English have their Mini, but everything that annoys them about the Mini, the A112 does better. It's bigger, 13-inch tires make the ride more comfortable, and he says it has a real hatchback. And that handyman types will love the fold-down rear seats. He says it's almost the size of a truck back here and the gas tanks found in front of the rear axle. The car offers a lot of space and great views. It's super, he says. The little engine has little trouble propelling the 685 kilo lightweight around. The car originally sold for around 2,500 euros. The only extra was the tachometer. When the A112 came onto the market in 1969, Christoph says it was the only serious super mini. It's a real car that drives well, even today. It's great fun to drive, he adds. The A112 may be an automotive milestone, but it isn't showing its age. This once trend-setting Italian Super Mini turns 45 this year. <laughs>